Greetings. Welcome. And we knew this would be a turnout, and we aren't really looking for another venue in Tryon. So if you have suggestions, we will, we're open to suggestions all the time for a venue, a bigger venue in Tryon. The Tryon History Museum Board extends a warm welcome to all of you tonight to our very special Tales of Tryon. Just a friendly reminder to please turn off your cell phones. Yes. My name is Joy Saberquist, and I am Vice President of the Tryon History Museum. Our president, Dick Calloway, is out of the country right now, and I have to admit that the two times that he called me from Kenya, <laughs> the cell phone reception was a lot clearer than when he calls me down the street from Braywick. I even, I even asked him, Dick, aren't you in Kenya? Oh, yes. And it was good. So he's keeping the tabs on us. I would like to mention also the rest of our museum board. Wanda May serves as our treasurer. Then we have Dan Gers, Francis Parker, Margaret Kell, Betsy Miner, Christine Benson. Also, we have Donnie Carruth, who sets up our venue here at the depot, and Skip Crow, who sets up our sound system. For the last four years, we've had an extremely valuable volunteer, and that is our Ellen Thomas. She has been recording our tales of Tryon and features them on YouTube. Just last week, when I was docent at the Museum and Visitor Center, a former Tryonite came in and told me that she watched all of the YouTube tales of Tryon. <laughs> when she gets homesick for Tryon, she scoots up every chance she gets to stay in her Tryon dream home that she always wanted to live in, in Gillette Woods. I want to say a special thank you to our sponsors, Parsec Financial and the Town of Tryon. You might say we wear two hats. We are the Tryon History Museum and also the Tryon Visitor Center. Our docents volunteer their time by sharing our unique Tryon history and giving information on our shops, our art galleries, our restaurants, and our points of interest. If you're interested in volunteering as a docent and greeter, please let me know. It can be little as two and a half hours a month. It can be a very rewarding experience, especially when former Tryon and Polk County visitors come in to reminisce and they love to come in to reminisce. Over the last few months, we've had visitors from Italy, France, and Canada, just to name a few. People participating at the horse events at the Tryon International Equestrian Center come in and they say that they always enjoy coming to our charming town of Tryon. And it's so good to hear that. We encourage you to take one of our membership forms with you tonight. There are also membership forms on our website. With your financial support, we can continue. With our mission statement of telling Tryon's story and enhancing our museum exhibits and collections. For the next couple of months, you will be seeing publicity and information of future tales and events. I'll quickly mention them. I timed myself. This is just five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> July 28th, a community historian, Dr. Tom Hanchett, from Charlotte's Levine Museum of the New South, will speak on the Rosenwald Schools. By 1928, a third of the South's black school children were served by the Rosenwald Fund. Booker T. Washington and Julius Rosenwald, philanthropist and president of Sears Roebuck, were instrumental in establishing an estimated 5,000 schools. 
There was one in Tryon, the Tryon Colored School, renamed the Embury Edmund School, or Ed Edmund Embury School, I think I reversed that. And um, there were three others in Polk County. August 25th, historian and author Dr. Milton Reedy will present the tales of early Tryon, the governor, the Indians, the hunters, and the plantations. That was the one we had to reschedule. There will, be, there will not be a tales in September because on Friday, September 16th, the museum's volunteers will be very busy with the second annual golf scramble tournament. This is a very important fundraiser for our museum. There is information on either sponsoring or playing that day. It's on our website, real easy to remember, tryonhistorymuseum.org, and Facebook. Also, the membership information is on that. Last year, it was a very successful fundraiser, and the feedback was that everyone had a great time. On Saturday, October 1st, from 2 to 4, the Tryon History Museum Tales will be a partnership event with the Tryon Cemetery Commission, Tryon Parks Committee, and the Polk County Historical Association. We are calling it the Tales of Tryon Cemetery Walkabout. There will be some individuals reenacting a few of our notables that are buried there. There will also be a hands-on demonstration on cleaning the cemetery markers using a very safe product called D2. So look for these upcoming events. There will be publicity in the Tryon Daily Bulletin on Facebook and on our website. Now for our main event, and the reason you're all here very patiently waiting, for Hub Arledge and Bill McCall. They describe themselves as two local yokels that enjoy reminiscing and bending your ear about Tryon. They've been great to work with, and it's been so much fun. However, I want you to know that there is a disclaimer. Hub and Bill will not be held responsible for going over any designated time limit. So if you have to leave, you have permission to leave. But they will continue. <laughs> they also welcome audience participation, and as best we can, we will pass the microphone around if there are uh, people that would like to participate and uh, give their two cents, too. I did receive strict orders from our president, Dick Callaway, in one of those cell phones conversations that we need to use the microphones because this is important Tryon history that we want documented. So we will be trying to pass the mics around. So we welcome this dynamic duo, Hub Arledge and Bill McCall, so take it away. I'll tell you, this is, this is such a privilege for us. I'm going to make a few introductory remarks and Hub can do it and we'll just fly into it. Hey, Bill. I've counted at least 20 other natives in this room, at least that many, when I start looking around. So uh, you guys keep us straight, okay? If we, uh, if, we, if we blow something, just raise your hand and say, no, it wasn't quite like that. That's not the way I remember it. But we're, we're, we're wide open. We're counting on you keeping us straight. We are, we are so excited to do this because... You know, we were just a couple of kids that, from the 50s, in the 50s, we were, you know, he was seven, I was eight when it started. And, you know, when I ran us through high school, and then we were gone for a while. Then we came back and went into business with our fathers. And, you know, been here ever since. So, it really, this place really matters to us, and I hope it matters to you. Can um, you turn it up just a bit for the people in the back? Okay, that better? Yeah. Okay, I'll hold it right there. You gotta hold it pretty close. Okay, uh, that means that I'm learning right now. Okay, uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun with this, and as I say, chip in if you want to add something or correct us or whatever. So, uh, up stay a minute or two, and then we'll we'll start through well, town. First of all, I want to thank you all for coming. Uh, I hope we can convey to you what a wonderful little town we had here. 
Uh, we had five active grocery stores right on Trade Street during the 50s. We had 14 service stations between Oliver Hills and Lynn. 14, yes. Uh, and Hutch's Amico at the state line. So this is a great little town. Uh, we're going to talk, start out the valley and work our way into town. And, uh, there's several people, Garland can correct us, I know, if, if, we, if, we, if we miss a place. But um, we're going to start and work our way all the way through town. So here we go. Okay, we've got a big old map here. I found this in the closet at, my, at the house. I'm living in my dad's house now. We found this. This is a big map of Tryon. It starts up here in the valley. Technically, back the valley, but we grew up calling it the valley. That's what it is, the valley. It goes all the way to the state line, and down here is the Lake Lanier and the Boy Scout camp. And some of us, that means a lot. <laughs> okay. So we'll walk you through a lot of stuff from the valley all the way to the scout camp and state line. And uh, I'm just going to say, you know, we were so lucky to, to grow up in this town in, in those times, in the 50s. Now, we're not pretending that the 50s were the perfect decade for everybody. They were, they for, were us. for us. <laughs> and that's all we're talking about. We know there were, we know there were issues and problems at, those, at that time. Uh, not all citizens of Tryon have the same wonderful advantage we did, and we understand that. And uh, we just know we were so lucky. And that's what we're going to talk about, how sweet it was. Okay? So we're going to start in the valley. I'm going to go through a few things, and then, you know, he'll, he'll just go back and forth. But uh, when you go to the valley up here, it starts right up here, Val Hollihan Weavers. And I see my classmate Bobby Lawrence's wife back there. Is Carol here? And yeah, there she is. Bobby was my classmate, and uh, Ralph and Adelaide were the parents that ran it, and it was a fabulous place. It's still out there, you know, and she lives up on the hill there. But it, but it had all the handicrafts from all over the, the mountains, and it was just beautiful. Like loons out there weaving. It's just a wonderful, wonderful start to the valley as you come down. And uh, yeah, hand woven. I, I still have a tie that was made. At, at oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go on. Yeah. I, I wore a tie to school every day in my senior year, and it all came from Val Alla Hand Weavers. Yeah. Oh, well, I wore a tie every day to school in my senior year, and they all came from Val Alla Hand Weavers. They were wool ties. Beautiful. Huh. I'm not mistaken, I have one as well. <laughs> Most of us did, I think so. Yeah. And, and sort of next as you come down, you know where Caramai dining room, okay? You all know about Caramai. The deal about Caramai is this guy came from Miami, okay? Uh -huh. And he called it Carolina, Miami, Caramai. <laughs> Okay, not everybody knew that, did you? Okay, that's where you thought, why is it called Carolina, Carolina, Miami? And of course, we've all been going out there ever since. Uh, it's a marvelous place. Uh, Edney's Garage. Yeah. Dad, grandfather, brother, two brothers, and me. Okay. Douglas. Gotcha. gotcha. That's, that's Douglas Edney, Edney's Garage. Eddie's Garage. One of the cool things about Eddie's Garage is their, uh, uh, um, what am I trying to say? Their, uh, it's their, their security system. The security system out there is so cool to protect them against being break, break in. Have you, have you seen it? Yeah. There's a sign on the door that says snake inside. <laughs> it doesn't get much cooler than that, does it? <laughs> I, I haven't read many break ins. Okay. Yeah, and uh, there was a sawmill there as well. Irons. Right, right. And so it was just one of the institutions out in the valley. Shields? Before you get to Edney's, in around 1941, my dad was transferred from Columbus Post Office to Tryon. And we moved into a rock house up on the hill. It's a big rock wall about. And then, uh, what, two seconds, we're at Edney's Garage, I think. <laughs> and so we moved there around 1941, 42. And the biggest activities I can remember were squirrel hunting up in the mountains behind. <laughs> exactly, exactly. 
Yeah, well, there were, there were a group of us that lived in the valley. And we lived in the valley before we came to town uh, in, in the 49. But we were out in the valley. I had, there were five of my boy, boy classmates that lived in the valley. I mean, we, and you lived out there for a while, too. You, and a lot, of folks, a lot of folks have lived in the valley. Yeah, I was going to tell you about that. Right oh, beside yeah. the valley and we were shot, there's a rock house. Uh, my parents built that house in 1935 when they got married, and my dad commented in the 70s he bought a new Ford automobile, and he said I paid more for this automobile than I paid for that first rock house. <laughs> yeah, so I worked in the, we lived on Warrior Mountain Road. We were out there for a long time before we came into town. And let me talk about yeah. the tally. This is the Tally Ho restaurant. It was on the curb on the right side above. Uh, Caramel, and I understand it was a swinging place. I, don't, I really don't remember it, but in the 40s and maybe early 50s, and I still got the menu from uh, Tally Ho. <laughs> we came fish tank. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, it was on the other side of the street. Okay, okay. And about all this stuff that we've got up here, we're going to talk for a while until we get to about the middle of town. And we're going to take a little break, and you can all get unloaded and whatever if you would like to. Then we'll start up and finish and do it again. So. You know, you can take a look at the stuff we've got. Uh, the next thing that comes along in the valley that is important to all of us, and I'm, if you had been here, you would, you would also, the willows. Okay? Oh, I knew that would ring a bell. Ask how many people worked at the willows? Well, it was Bess and Harlan Esmond. And Shields. <laughs> Douglas Hidden. Yeah. Gary Dunlop Durham. Oh, he did? Mr. Son. And there's a Thompson out of Colston Willis. In April of 68, Thompson Willis and Thompson Willis. And April of 68, 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 Thompson <laughs> went back for and I would already sold and I said, I'll get you. So I went in and he said, I want a pine float, which is a glass of water and a toothpick. He <laughs> 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 gave, gave me a $10 bill and he said, just keep the silver. Oh. And I put two and two together and I gave him back about $3 in cash and I kept $7 in silver. <laughs> <laughs> good deal, good deal, good deal. Carol and Bess. Ran the Willows. They were a wonderful couple. Yeah. They didn't hire anybody but teenagers. That's, that's right. right. That's right. In the mornings when school, they were they were running the place by themselves. On a Friday night after a football game, you couldn't get in the place. They had a jukebox. And I don't think Francis did any dancing. Did you, Francis? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Jukebox. Hotel? What was it? Oh, it was a it was a, it was a joint. You know, place to go eat. It was a nice joint. Right? It wasn't a joint. It was a really nice little. Really nice. Little really nice. Little you could go for sandwiches, hot dogs, burgers, and and. Uh, Where was it located? It was on the left, coming coming toward Where town on the left. Yeah, there's a trailer park there. Yeah, there's a trailer park. It's there. gone. There's this sort of octangular shaped building beside it. But it's right next to that. And there would be willow trees. And you drive in, you park right under the willow trees. And it was a little tiny building, but a yeah. huge parking lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there were we just go around. We're just all it's around in and all like around. Like and we'd go in. Yeah. If I and took my word, and talked with Tommy Melton, the county commissioner. I he worked with him. He came out every Friday night with Billy Spivey, pecan pie, and ice cream. I was, <laughs> about 50 cents. I was getting ready to I say. Best Nethers. Yeah, a rap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> best is pecan pie. Yeah. yeah. That was that was it. That was great. <laughs> So that was our hangout. And right, right beside the uh, Willows, uh, James E. Johnson had a little radio repair shop. And yeah. that little house made, I, I saw it the other day, the little kind of round house. Yeah, was, was that it? Yeah, you remember? So. It actually has some angles on it. Yeah, it's basically round. Yeah. James yeah. E. Johnson had a little radio shop. It's, it's, still, it's still there. Radio. Yeah. On Friday night, the first person there was the last person to leave. Yeah, pretty much. You get your car out of the park. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, you were just getting your four cars behind you. You were there until everybody peeled off. It was, it was the greatest. Yeah. Uh, well, that, yeah. that building actually started out as my grandparents' 
first wine shop. Wow. Okay, that's a good thing. We're going to get to the one thing. I didn't know that. That's how the will is. That's how the building got there. As a matter of fact, that's next on the list. Bill, have you have you flipped? Have you skipped Valley Forks and? Uh, Oh, I did. Oh, yeah, I, got, I jumped to the willows too fast. Valley Forge. Now we got to do that. Just go back. Thank you. My brother's keeping me straight. He always does. He always does. You know, Valley Courts. Okay, you see, it's a big neon sign. It's still out there. Valley Courts. Okay, it was, it was built back in the, this day. It was a motel, which has got little cabins all on the, on the hillside. It was a miniature golf course. It was a swimming pool and a restaurant. And we used to go out there, and I took a life saving course at the swimming pool. And we'd go out and play Minster Golf. And it was just, just, it was just fun. Is that what became the youth center? Yeah, and it became the youth center. The youth center, yeah. That yeah. became the youth center. I'll tell you a funny story about the swimming pool. All right. The kids from town used to go out there any place 50 cents and swim on Sunday afternoon. Well, Sonny Langford was out there. And somebody said, Well, Sonny, get in. He said, Go get up. He said, get in. He said, no, I can't swim. He said, oh, you can. He said, we'll pull you out. He said, get in. So he finally talked him into it. Sonny went in. He stood on the bottom. And just stood there. Looking <laughs> so, so Bill Brock jumped in after him. And he climbed up on Bill's shoulders. And Bill was stuck. So, so, so finally we got Sonny out. And then Bill got out. But that was, uh, when he said he couldn't swim, he was dead serious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could not swim. All right, now you mentioned the Vollmer. You said there was the wine, the wine shop there. He had a wine place there. Yeah. There was a wine. You know, her dad had a winery. And my my grandparents. And your grandparents started it. Yeah. And then out Vineyard Road, if you go all the way to the end, go over the end down, you just get to the end and then drop off down in there. That was the vineyard and the winery. Absolutely. And that was it. We had relatives in Fire City who would come over here from wine, for wine. <laughs> we, she, we were fine until the county went dry. Yeah, well, that one, that didn't be good. Karen's dad had a landscaping and, and did rock work. He did the rock work at my parents' new house when we moved to town in 48. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, it's all over town. We have rock work at our house, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. And, and after the county went dry, then, of course, and during that same time, there, the, the grapes came in for another use. We just bought baskets of grapes. <laughs> you know, there were vineyards all over the place. Fermented your own. Yeah, that's right. Ferment your own if you want to. But we would buy eating grapes, red and white grapes, whatever you wanted, in little baskets. And there were grape stands out through the valley. And if you turn on Warrior Drive, where the first two houses are on the right, was a vineyard and a big grape stand. And that was the big one. And so, you know, we we're always going out. I'm going to run out and about and get some grapes. Yes, please do. And on every every curve going up 176 to Saluda, there was people selling grapes. That's right, that's right. And at the depot here in town, in the depot. there were vendors for grapes. The train would stop and people would uh, sell them grapes. That was great. Uh, Nelson Leonard's Grocery Store in Phillips 66, right? It's gone now. It was torn down a few years ago, right as you go into how, to the uh, Armand Field across from the church was a little grocery store. Nelson Leonard. Pedro. Huh? Pedro. Oh yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. But it was a Philip 66. And and at one time there was mail service out there. Yes. Bell Hall, I think they called it. And there he had mailboxes yeah. on the wall. As you went in his door, in front door, there was a row of mailboxes. So some people that lived in the valley got their mail at Leonard's store. So I remember when those were there, yeah. Post yeah. yeah, it was post office. It was Valhalla Post. It was an address, Valhalla. Instead of trying, you got addressed to Valhalla. So, pretty cool. Uh, yeah, Valhalla Post Office. Um, yeah, they had some cabins back in there. Yeah. Yeah. There was, yeah. Not much left there now. Uh, let's see. Mills Moss Cellar. They're making rugs back in there. They, they, for a while, maybe that was later, in, in, the, in the old. Uh, the house there, the old house. Seven Hearts. Seven Hearts, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they were, he was in there doing, doing the rugs. And uh, Judith's got, Judith's got uh, my cellar rugs down there in her bookshop on downtown now. Uh, okay, we're all ready to Harmon Field. There's a lot to talk about at Harmon Field. I mean, that's where uh, the ball games were played, football, baseball, 
and the horse show, and the dog show. Yeah, the big trying to, the horse show, the tally ho, the big coach that we used to have. They drive it out there with the horses and the hounds all around it, and they had a big, big hedge, a big ring, a great big ring, and the horse shows were most basically held inside that ring. And they didn't have as many ball fields out there at that time. It was kind of wide open. And so the horse show would be held on a Wednesday, and they'd let us out of school. How about that? Whole, whole town shut down to go to the horse whole show. Whole town shut down. Story, yeah. And on a Wednesday. It was a real big deal. People came from all over the country to go to the Tron Horse Show. And, and we parked cars. Boy Scouts parked cars. So we would get out there. And, yeah. Who drove the coach? I have a picture. That's a good question. Rob Capps. Bobby yeah. Capps? Yeah. Rob Capps. Yeah. Rob Capps. Yeah. 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 And Rob, Rob and his brothers built that rock house I'm just talking about, as a matter of fact. Well, I want to put on the back of the picture so for future. Somebody will know who the person driving it is. But there are two or three good, yeah. gals on it with parasols and gloves. You know, just like in the old days. That's yeah. what they were. Oh, yeah. They look um, great. And it was a fabulous picture. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah. They had a barbecue, uh, a lunch out there, barbecue. Everybody was invited to the barbecue. It was a, it was a big deal. Yeah. Really there was a hound, hound show. Yeah. They had a show with the hound. Uh, it was just, it was monstrous. And let's just say we parked cars, and uh, it was dusty and hot, and we parked cars and everything. And as you got to be an older scout, I finally, finally arrived. The best job, Tick Butler, my buddy, is a classmate of mine, William Butler, we call him Tick. But Tick Butler and I finally got the right, the best job. There was a gate that, that let the horses into the into the field. They had a paddock back there where they were waiting. And you had to open the gate for each class. You know? So Tick and I sat on the fence and opened the gate and let them in and watched the horse show. It was perfect. We could sit there and watch the horse show. All the other guys, probably you, were yeah. he, was out there, he was out there in the dust parking cars, and Tick and I were sitting on the fence. And, uh, you know. Yeah, I was a year younger. I was out there in the field. That's right. Cars. That's yeah. right. Tick and I were you older, so we got to do that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, okay. And, uh, at Harmon Field. Here's another thing about Harmon Field. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, huh? You don't remember, I guess, but we, we did the horse show program. We printed the horse show program every year. Utilized everything in the shop. Everybody sure did everything. To get that book Folded right every page by hand and, and yeah. stapled it. Yeah. Everything, everything was done by hand. No uh, co-labels. By hand, for sure. Let's see. Uh, the other thing about... Yeah. Somebody go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say that our grandfather used to run a concession stand at the horse show that they had every year. Mr. Kahulis. That's right. That's right. He sure did. Mr. Kahulis ran a lot of things. He sure did. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll be covering him on you in a little later. Yes, we will. And uh, let's see. The other thing I was going to say about, okay, got that. I'm going to feel the dog show. Oh, one of my proudest moments as a kid in the early 50s was when I won the Blue Ribbon with my little dog, a little tiny black toy Manchester. And for some reason, we won the Blue Ribbon for dog who looks most like his master. <laughs> got a picture, and here I am, it's a little guy with a little jacket with blue jeans rolled up, and a little black dog. What's he want? <laughs> I see, I see see my oldest daughter we were really lucky my parents took tanya to the dog show two years in a row she won the prize puppy yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, That's it. how lucky can you be yeah now here's another thing about Harmon field i told you we played Harmon field was the football field and on friday nights we had to try and high football games but then on a probably a thursday the emory high school the black school here in town yeah. had seven man football. And I remember going to some games out there and watching the, the black teams play. They'd have a team come in to play on a Thursday afternoon. And uh, I just thought that was amazing. But they, they used the same field. Yeah, and they had, they had a good ball club. Boy, they were good they, friends with one of the players worked from uncle at the grocery store and I was yeah. there with him. It OC was, Super. It was so good. It was so they, good. Were, they were a good little ball club. They really yeah. were. Yeah, and, and as I was saying a while ago, as is as is now, that's you know that's when you would see that community 
coming into trial to play football. And then, but we didn't, not very often, but that was to play football. So, so that was, I remember that well. Um, was there a charge for admission to your football game? High school, yes. Yeah, there was something. I forget. It was a little bit. A little bit. How much? 50 cents. 50 cents, maybe. No, 10 cents. 10, something like that. I know the programs, were, programs sold for 10 cents. Probably so. Probably so. Now we're going to get to something that uh, where we kind of got started, the Tron Country Club. We, uh, as soon as the 50s started, we got to be old enough to even think about golf. And one of my mom played golf. You, you, yeah. Yours too, right? Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, I thought, I want to play golf. And so we went out to the club, and the pro was called Ted Fox back in the early 50s. Here we go. Whoop. Bring that to Ted Fox. Oh, he's got Ted Fox. Country Club, golf professional. Yeah. Okay, now here's what Ted Fox did for us. Yeah. This is 1953. 1953. Ted, Ted put on the clinic. For the kids, he cut us down two golf clubs from a hickory shell, and, and we've kept them all these years. Look at this, this is this is from the same set. Same set. Right? This is a mashie, and this is a mashie nibbler. 1953. 1953, and we took the golf 69 club. years ago this month in June, and we're still playing. I played this morning, <laughs> not with this. We got a little better clubs than that, but this is precious. Let me tell you, it's precious. And Lou Hoskins took over out there later in the 50s. 57. 57. So we had two pros during the 50s. And, and they were something else. They really were. Uh, the other thing about the club was after my senior year, thank you, my senior year in high school, and after his senior year in high school, we were both lifeguards. We were the lifeguard out there after we graduated high school. And that last summer, we, we took care of the pool. At that time, we had to put chlorine in the pool and do all this kind of stuff to run it and everything. And funny thing, I looked down after a while, my swim trunks had little white spots all over them. <laughs> Bleached them out, you know. So. And the pool, pool was filled out of the creek back then. Yeah. We pumped water out of the creek and it didn't yeah. get warm until like last of August. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can we go back to Harvard Field a minute? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, it was just a field and the airplanes used to land there. And I remember Sam Bingham brought his tailor craft in there and I hopped on my bike and went out there. And since I was in pilot training with, in Hendersonville, he let me sit in it while he dropped it off. So that was great. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, the, the country club, uh, while Ted, I think it was while Ted was there, uh, Sam Sneed came. Yeah. Yeah. Had an exhibition out there? Yeah. You sure did. Yeah. Fred Edwards caddied for him. Yeah, how about that? Yeah. It, so Fred won the caddy contest. They, there were a lot of caddies out there then, and they had a, yep. a, a playoff to see, and the winner of the playoff got the caddy for Sam Sneed, and Fred won it. Yeah. I didn't know, I'm not surprised at that. But yeah, and uh, yeah, so t and Ted Fox, let's see, how did they do? There was another thing about the, the club. Oh, I know what it was. Lou Hoskins, who came along next as the pro, I still needed more golf lessons. Imagine that. <laughs> you know, at age nine, no, I'd say at age 17 or 18, I needed golf lessons. And so it, it, was, it was the year I was the lifeguard, and so I traded for golf lessons. I taught his daughters to swim. I did too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, well, I did. Yeah, that, you can harder. Sure, yeah. <laughs> That's right. He had three little girls, didn't he? Something like that? Yeah. yeah. Three little girls, and so we taught them to swim. And, yeah, and, Lou, and, and Lou, too, the son. And Lou, too, yeah. Is Catherine Wall here? Is Catherine? No, Catherine not here. When Catherine took swimming lessons, we gave swimming lessons in the mornings before the pool opened. And that water was so cold. Her lips were blue. I mean, yeah. I didn't want to get in that cold water either, I tell you. <laughs> it, was, it was something uh, getting in the cold water. Any uh, other country club stories? Uh, we just love it. We could go on and on. We love it. We're still still loving it. Shields? Just uh, for those folks who were playing back in the 50s, uh, in 1953, uh, my parents had bought the land now known as Country Club Heights. Yeah. And those, they used to play uh, when the first green was not where it is today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you looked up to the right, 
particularly in the fall, you'd see this big wall of glass up there. And that was the house that my brother designed when he was uh, in the design school at NC State in 1953. And uh, we moved in there, and myself and my brother Ligon, we would go down after the course was clear, we'd go down and play as many holes because it was empty. So we, we got to have a lot of free golf at that point. <laughs> you, you, you could pull that kind of stuff off. I remember playing. When I was a kid, I can remember playing in the swim trunks and barefoot. You don't see that anymore. Bill. Yeah. But since you're talking golf, my name is Bert Costa, and I was he was my roommate. And that's my good buddy. Yeah. But I played golf with Dustin Johnson when he is the uh, coast of Carolina. So now you see where he's at. Yeah. And so I got invited to a AMA golf tournament in Alpharetta, Georgia. I said, I don't have a ticket or $400. So bring your sticks anyway. So I took my motor on. Got down there and said, come on, grab your sticks and come on. You got a shotgun start. Then you got a number, go to a cart number 134. I said, okay. So I go to uh, cart number 134 and I'm sitting there with my stick. And this guy said, John, and John Burke and so forth. And uh, I said, what kind of work you do? He said, we have a catered company. I said, oh, really? Where you get your work? He said, we catered to Georgia don't want to. Oh, holy, I'm in the wrong place. He said, by the way, we did the Delta Airlines. So anyway, here come, and I was playing with him. Here come these two guys. They were late. One was a, a guy that had a bowl haircut, white, and that was Bobby Crimmins. And this black guy come on up there, and he was a little heavy set, and had, had a pair of salt pepper hair. He come up here and said, Doug, I said, Bert, he said, Hank. Body. Mm -hmm. I said, hey, look, look, wait a minute. Who's that? Who's that black guy? He said, oh, Henry Aaron. I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I played five hours with Henry Aaron, and I got invited to his funeral uh, uh, about, what, six, six months ago? Yeah. So things that happened to me after leaving trying that I can't even relate to. I'm, I'm scared to go outside because I'm afraid I'll trip over a horseshoe. That's out of school for the horse show. So Dr. Palmer said, to my grandma and granddad, he got to have his tonsils out, so we'll 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 just do it on horse show day. <laughs> and that's what he did. I couldn't go. I had my tonsils out there. Are you Burton Constance? Yes, he is. Huh? Get out of here. Are you Burton Constance? I'm an first, folks. First, my gracious. I brought my, I brought my high school tonsils out there. And all I, I thought you were in Myrtle Beach, man. For their for three days for their uh, for their what was that year the second fifth yeah. uh, high school reunion wow. and uh, they everybody showed up and I think they had a good time didn't you Bill? <laughs> it was a fine time. But uh, I'm waiting on y'all to get down to my Uncle Bob again. Well, we're going to talk about gas for less. So we're, yeah, we're gonna, there you go. We're going to get there. Hey, I worked there when I was 12 years old. Yeah, we're going to get there. The Hank Aaron story is unreal. I got pictures of that. And the place was packed. Yeah. And I was so nervous the first five or six holes, I, I couldn't even. I, I said, Is that really Hank Aaron? Yeah. And he was a nice man. He was a super dude. Bobby Crimmins are a little bit different, but <laughs> 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 that's Georgia basketball. Yeah, that, 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 that works. Georgia uh, Tech, man. Burton, always good to hear from you. Yeah, and Jerry Edwards over here. We're all classmates. Burton and Jerry, we were all classmates, class of 60. Y'all should wear name tags. Yeah, we should. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, that's the country club. We're, we're, yeah, we're more. Who was the famous vocalist that lived in Saluda that came down and played? Perry Como. Perry, Perry, Perry Como came down and played. He was a member of Red yeah. Fox. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he did come down and play. We used to have tennis courts. There's still the remains of an asphalt court, and there was a clay court. And we had Tilden, maybe came. There was one of the famous tennis players came and did uh, an exhibition way back then. So, yeah, we don't have tennis anymore, but uh, it was. Next is Smith Garage. John L. Smith, okay? Uh, it's that, you know where it is? It's that kind of stucco building that's sitting right past. As you come down the hill from the country where, club. Where the tanks are, around, right, right at the, okay. uh, yeah. the town line out here. Yeah, yeah, that, that was town that, that was a Smith's Gulf Station. 
And I used to take my 55 Ford back in there and pull it on you know, the pits they had to work on your car. You just drive in, then you just go down under the thing. Wait, you know, you crawl down under there, and he'd let me work on it sometimes, and then he'd have to do it sometimes. But you got ill, and he had, you know, his his sons went to school with us, a little older, but uh, we knew that family really well. Smith's Garage was an institution. So, Bill, that yeah. building, that's why there is a approach to go around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a the there's a garage yeah. bay underneath. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 You could and you could go way back in the back of it. Have, okay. have, they did the work back in there. Yeah. So that was Smith's Garage. Um, Let's see, then we're hitting the city limits, right there. Next, you step right over the city limit. Come down the hill, and this is a good thing. But the ice plant. Okay. Ice plant in North Carolina. Yeah, it was, yeah. There was a kid that lived in one of the houses back in there. His last name was Jones, and he lived in one of those houses, and he lived right by the ice plant. He used to say, my name is Snake Jones, and I'm from ice plant in North Carolina. <laughs> I have laughed at that every time I've thought of that for 60 years. I'm from Ice Plant, North Carolina. My name's Snake Jones. That's right. So that's Ice Plant, North Carolina. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, and uh, you to, they'd open a big old front door, and the guy would go in there with big tongs and drag out ice. And it was a regular ice plant. Well, their big deal was taking ice to the peaches down in uh, Campobello, yeah. Inman area. That was their summertime. Uh, yeah. Take where the pictures would be shipped. They would, they would run the ice trucks all day long down to uh, inland area. Now we get to Little Abner's. You've got to talk about Kurt Urkel that owned the ice plant. Oh, okay. He was the patron saint of trying high school football. Yeah. He bought the uniforms. That's right. Kurt Urkel owned the plant. And he, he was on the field. And, well, it became Urkel Field. <laughs> <laughs> so he was a patron saint. Yeah, that's he right. also cooked horse, uh, horse show barbecue. Oh, that's right. That's right. And, sure and Francis' is. daddy, Arthur, cooked barbecue. Yeah. Exactly. Precisely. Game warden. Yeah. yeah. All right, Little Abner's. Nobody knows about it. So, <laughs> yeah, folks remember Little Abner's. Now we're talking a beer joint. It's, got, it's, a little, it's a little beer joint there, right on the left where the, the storage building's yeah. somewhere right in there. There was a little beer joint called Little Abner's. And, uh, what do you know about Lou I don't know about Lou Hoskins. He went there every day after work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pardon me? Lucky Lou owned that. Lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, his daughter Doris right there. I went to school. And we slip down from the school and get all the money and go down through there. Hot dog, I'm bringing it back. Mr. W.S. Hamilton. Oh, yeah. In 1962, oh. he said, What y'all boys doing down here? I said, Well, we're just sort of hungry. But you get, get back up at school. And the girl would give us money for a drink and a pack of crackers. He had the best hot dogs, you know. And we used to call him Cook and Crook. <laughs> <laughs> I would think a rookie had it before Jack. I would think a rookie had it before Jack. Wasn't that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that sounds about right. Yeah, that sounds about right. Doris went to school with my sister, graduated a year before you. You graduated in 60. 60. Yeah, and she graduated in 59 and Yachty. Yeah, Yachty. And you're 61 and you're 62. Yeah. What y'all saying? I can back it up. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, we're doing okay so far. We're verified. Really? Okay, across cross from uh, well, a little further back, the uh, that long brick building down there on the right, down by the stream. It was uh, long, it used to be uh, open road coffee shop before they went over to Columbus. But, yeah, but before that, it, it had it had weaving looms in there, and, and it was a skating rink. Mountain Industries is that what it was? Yeah. So that, that was full of weaving looms. That was Appalachian weavers, and that's where the Lawrence's met. He was a weaver there, and Blue Ridge weavers, and I don't know how many weavers put Yeah, that's right. She's right. the right. weaver in authority. Yeah. But it was a skating rink, too, at one time. Oh, that's right. It was for a little while, a skating rink. And then it was, it was a storage for um, the Gulf yeah. Uh, yeah. for a while. That sounds right. That sounds right. I wasn't allowed to go to the skating rink because it was too close to a little after. <laughs> There was a certain stigma about little Abner's among some families that we weren't, we weren't supposed to be thinking about that. So. It's always a rather fascinating place, though, for some of us who didn't get to go there. 
we are going to enter town here a little bit. We're going to start in on North Trade Street. Uh, here's, here's our map. Here's the state line. Smith Garage would be right about here. We're going to start coming into town. This is North Trade to the middle of town. There's South Trade and 176 out, going down to the state line and out to Lake O'Neill. So we're going to start going down the street and telling you what was there back in the 50s, best we can. Okay. So we're going to start start with uh, do 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 do. Well, we could hit the school right off. Well, yeah. Yeah, and then Duke Power Company was Duke on the Power, corner there. Duke Power was on the corner. That's right. Duke yeah. Power was on the corner. Building. Was it yeah. sort of where the building well, the kindergarten's down there now, but they yeah. were right on the sidewalk. Yeah, it was Duke Power. And, they, and they, you could go around back under, and that's where they kept their truck yeah. to have them fenced in there. In the, yeah. And the Underwoods yeah. lived back in there. You know? That's it. That's it. And we're going to go up School Hill, where the elementary school is, which was 1 through 12 when we started. And the whole thing was there. And so we, uh, we went all went to school there. And, uh, and it ended up building the, the building next to it became the high school. And when I moved into high school, we moved into that building later. And it also later on became the middle school. And then now the middle school moved out, and it became all elementary school. And uh, when the old high school, and the one through twelve, there was also an old gym. A lot of you remember that. It's gone now. The old cracker box gym. Get about cracker four box gym. Yeah, there was like there was about this much room between the floor and the wall. After you did it, they do a layup, you hit the wall. So you got to get down and pass it. And you come in the front door, and as you came in the front door of the gym, all the seats were on that side. The home team was over here, and the white team was over there. And right here was a chalkboard, and a guy standing there with a piece of chalk and an eraser. Every time somebody scored, they erased it and broke down the next score. That's right. That's how they did. It. That, that, when that gym came down. We cried. I mean, it's just, everything was in that thing. It, uh, we had Halloween carnivals. We had, of course, basketball. Had cake walks, square dances, sock hops. Everything was in that thing. And when that thing went down, it broke our heart. Well, there was a shop in the basement. Woodworking. Yes, shop. there was. There sure was. There sure was. He said there was a woodworking shop in the basement of the gym. There was, yeah. yeah. And we're going to be talking but it about, wasn't there when we were in school. Yeah, and we'll be talking about scouts a little bit later on. But when I was scoutmaster for a, for a while, we met in the gym. Of course, after scout meeting, we played basketball. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a good place, but we met there. Yeah. How large is your graduating class? Uh, what, 48, something like that? Ah, 45. 45. Mine was 52, the largest class in John Huskins. Monster class. Yeah, yeah, monster class. Yeah. 45, that's right. 45. There's only 12 in my class. 12? The first year we had to go 12 years to school. There's 11 oh, right. before that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I went 14. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we invited Tommy for some reason. Tommy Kill went 14. <laughs> so you're way more educated than Carl. <laughs> oh I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, let's see, we've got the uh, okay, up there on the school hill behind the gym, the gym for the school hill, there was a boy scout hut. Before we went to the to the gym, we had a scout hut. When I joined the scouts, we were we met a little scout hut against the wall against the hillside over there, a little tiny thing. Also the, also, the brownies met there. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was the brownies. It was the brownies. Well, it's cute. I've had all the way, all the way, all the way. Now, I'm going to tell you one story about when I joined Scouts. There was, when I joined as a 10, 11 year old, there was a guy in the troop called D. Preston. And believe it or, believe it or not, that. Uh, we used to uh, be disciplined in a, a, a rather interesting way. I forget who the scoutmaster was, but we used to have what we call the belt line. Anybody know what that is? You remember an Indian gauntlet run? You know, if, we, if you messed up and the scoutmaster said, okay, belt line, belt line, everybody line up. And we'd all get on each side, take our belts off, and the guy had to run through and you'd take a pop in. Okay? Well, that always worked pretty well. It was, you know, people were shaped up after that. One time, though, D took his belt off, turned it around, and hit some. He hit, he hit the hit with the buffalo part. So I said, 
Surely not I'm not, me. I'm not, I'm not surely not me. I said, I don't think I'm going to mess with that guy. <laughs> he popped him with the boat. But yeah, we had the bell line. How many were in your scout? Well, How many were in the scouts? Oh, gosh. Good, good many. We had three troops yeah. in town. We had two white troops and a black troop. Yeah. And we were troop one. It's now one fifth. We probably had at least 25. Yeah, yeah I'd say yeah. 25. And then there's troop four at the Baptist church. And then there was a, 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 a troop over at East Side, a black troop. So we had three scout troops. Yeah, but we were in there. I just wondering how long that belt line was. <laughs> <laughs> too long, too long. Well, so, some of us who didn't go through the belt line, we did get picked in about 1953 to go to the scout chamber in California. Yeah. And uh, we, there were, I think, about four or five of us. I don't know if there's anybody else here who went on that trip. But uh, we went to Spartanburg and got on the train, and the train grew as it went across the country. And uh, they keep adding cars on. So by the time it got to California, it was a long train with all these scouts, and uh, there were a few of us. Bill and I did the same thing in 57. We went to Valley Forge. Over here, all this stuff right over here. Call, we, call the train in Spartanburg. Yep. Call the train in Spartanburg, went to Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. And that's all our, a bunch of stuff from that trip. The Piedmont Council, the Bellman, Forest City. We had a little army puff tent we slept in. Yeah, but you didn't get a scarf uh, that was signed by Dorothy Lamour. <laughs> no, we, we had President Eisenhower speak. The best we had. All right, I'll, 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 we had President Eisenhower and we had the Air Force Thunderbirds. Is that not? Well, it's still not enough, is it? We also had Roy Rogers and Trigger, you know. Oh, jeez. I think we're just in bliss. Yeah, we, we can't match that. But, With this question for her. Yeah. What was Nelson Jackson's affiliation with the with the Boy Scout? You know he, Nelson Jackson? Yeah. Long yeah. Ago? He, he used to bring a whole ton of them a bus down oh, yeah. the ocean lake. But I don't know if that was a My, my dad was a scoutmaster and Nelson was his assistant and they would take him down to Ocean Lake. Now the Ocean Lake's now that Ocean Lake's at 4,700 campsites. Yeah, it was just a beach. I didn't know what Nelson, he was a big scout. Uh, right, he was, and, and, and his daddy too, old yeah. man Nelson, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they used to take a lot of people in. I didn't know how he fitted into the scout field during that time. Right. 51, 52, and 53, but I knew he didn't bring a ton of them. Yes. Uh, old Blushy had it. Yeah, he did. A staunch uh, scout. He was, yeah. Yeah, he was heavy in the scouts, he sure was. Yeah. And, uh, and my dad was a scoutmaster back for seven years or so in the 40s. And then uh, then I got in the scouts. And then I was a scoutmaster for seven, seven years. We got some stuff over here about the scout camp, and we'll talk about that a little later. But I went to scout, the scout camp out there 12 times, six as a scoutmaster, as a scout, and six as a scoutmaster. So, and, you know, that's a pretty important thing. A lot of the scouting stuff we did is big. Uh, let's see, we've got the... The school, the scout hut, there yeah, were the Presbyterian, the, oh, the old Presbyterian church was on the hill across from the town hall. Okay? And then it became the lodge hall later on. Right. That, that brick building up there on the hill, that was the Presbyterian church before they put a new one out at Harmon Field. Yeah. And, and, before, and before that, though, once you leave School Street coming up with McFarland Funeral Home. Yeah, we got the McFarland. Yeah, home. that's right. Yeah. Got that in there. They, they had the funeral home. And then right beside them, late Mr. and Mrs. McFarland lived there. Yeah, and it was right there on the left, down yeah. right past the bank. Yeah. Right down the middle. Yeah. Right. We're right where, right where Tri Federal is now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, pretty much. I'd like to mention here in World War II, we, they had the scrap drive, and they yeah. piled all the scrap everybody collected <coughs> on the school ground. And my friend Carl Buston and I used to pick through that and get all kind of good stuff. You <laughs> 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 might have to with the scrap, huh? Oh God! All right, let's see. We got the, that picture over there in the hotel. Talk to about that Buckingham. Oh, Buckingham Inn. Yeah, yes. that that my mother went to school in that building. That was yeah. they had eleven grades in. She was born in nineteen ten, and she and, and my uncle, my uncle born in nineteen nine. He wouldn't go to school until she went to school. Yeah, right. So they went to school together through eleven grades, and then in the. <laughs> Um, they went to school in that old building there. The new school up on the hill was built about the time they 
finish school in 2027, 20, I think. And because I have a picture of the of the football team, and it's up on the school playground up there now. And I have a picture somewhere of my mother's basketball, and they had black bloomers on the, 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 the uniforms, or black bloomers all the way down the rank on the basketball team. Well, the town and the town hall there now, and, and there was a hotel, and then let's see, Rector's Point. Where was it? A hotel? In the fifties, it, it was. It yeah. was yeah. It was a school, and then uh, I don't know who had the first trial hotel, but but Stanley, but we came to town. My dad and mother built up on Freeman Hill across from the Presbyterian Church about now in '48, and uh, Stanley, but well, Shields Flynn's parents, Shields lived right above us. Up, up on Freeman Hill, and when they moved up to Country Club Heights, Stanley Buckingham moved into that house, and he owned Buckingham, and he named it Buckingham Inn, and he kept it until the town bought it in 1954 and made the town hall, and the fire department was there. We had we had oh, yeah. we had our, our base for the fire trucks and all, all that down there. Yeah. yeah. All right, and then Rector's Cleaners was right right there on the corner, right. where the garden is now. Right. Yeah. That building is gone. Yeah. It's gone. Uh, the Dannises, Mary Dannis and her sister, ran the hotel oh, for did? a number of years. Okay. Yeah. yeah, she lived up on the avenue. Right. Yeah. Across yeah. 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 from t -Pack. Right, yeah. Did they run it from Tryon Hotel or for Stanley Buckingham? Yeah. No, it was Tryon Hotel. Hotel Tryon. Hotel Tryon. Okay, Price. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't remember what her sister's name was. Jane and Judy Reynolds' parents owned Rector's Cleaners, remember? Oh, yeah, oh, that's right. Judy Reynolds, And unfortunately, yeah. he hanged himself. Yeah, that's right. Clyde Reynolds. Clyde, yeah. He, sure did. He yep. hanged himself. Sure did. <laughs> I just remembered something. We were, when we were talking about trying high school. I said, this has been going on for two weeks. I'm just remembering that. <laughs> we're going to go back to trying high school for just for a minute and the football and the ball and everything. Somebody over here is going to do something for us. Oh, oh cheerleader over here? Come on now, Francis. Some of these teachers, you know, Sally Jo Carter, okay, sixth grade, sixth grade teacher. She was brand new. She was brand new, and she, was, yep, she was great. Sally Jo, uh, Betty Brewer, Betty Brewer was a high school science, biology, and chemistry teacher. Kind of got me ready for dental school. You know? Patty Spivey's mother, Kathy Spivey, second grade. Is and Patty here, and, and, and the other one, Bob Swan's, Bob Swan's mother, Margaret. Oh my God, Margaret Swan. I, I love Margaret Swan. For one thing, she taught me to type, which I needed, and I still can type. The other thing, she was the best looking teacher in trying to school. <laughs> Easy. She was gorgeous and wonderful. And she used to, was willing to let our class have parties in their basement. Wow. And that's where we'd go for our parties down the basement. And old, old Bob there was a little guy upstairs, you know. We were downstairs partying, and you were wondering, what the heck are those guys doing? He was, he was sneaking around looking through the window. Yeah. Well, thank, thanks to Betty Brewer, yeah. Austin Chapman and myself got to go to the State Science Fair. Yeah. And it was only because of her teaching 
that. Oh, Josh was there. there. No, she was so she, she was just she a was fantastic science teacher. We were quick pretty young. I remember Betty Brewer said, keep your gas tank full in summertime because you don't have so much evaporation. <laughs> I remember that to this day. She told, she told us everything. She did. Uh, let's see. Uh, right there, if you pass the cleaners there, if you turn left, the toy maker's house is up there. The Tron toy makers, which is really famous. And that has a whole story of its own. And across it. Across the street in the toy makers was the original old Methodist church. Toy house. Yep, here's the toy house. It's a catalog. Yep, yep. And, uh, but the Methodist church, that was, that was our church. And you'd come out of church, and, 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 the, and it was where the body shop is, sort of where Tron Ford was the body shop. And it was a little, little white thing with little people, just a little wooden church. And you'd pop out of the church, and you'd look right there at the toy house. And the cars were parked, instead of parallel parking there, they were all parked at angles across the street. But that's where we went to church. So then it moved in 55 up to Godshaw Hill. So that was the story there. How about Jamie Sue Rector at Rector's Cleaners in the corner? Yeah, yeah, we, we mentioned that. Do you remember Jamie Sue? Jamie Sue? Yeah, remember oh, Jamie yeah. Sue? Oh, gosh, yeah, Jamie Sue for sure. <laughs> Laugh a minute. Yep. So I remember Jamie Sue for sure. And of course, right on the corner is Tron, Tron Motor Company, is what they call it. No, it was Pierce Wilson Pierce, Ford. Pierce Wilson. Yeah. Pierce Wilson Ford. Then, it was, then after they bought my grandmother's property, yeah. uh, Willis Coon came to Tron and, and tore, tore the uh, mom's house down and built Tron. It was Tron Motors. Yeah, it was Tron. yeah after that, yeah. Okay. It, was, it was Pierce, Pierce Wilson Pierce. Ford. Yeah. Uh, they had a dealership in Spartanburg, and they also had one here in Tron. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's how that went. And across the street. Baloo's Grocery. Yeah, Tell us yeah, that's, that. that's where I grew up. That's, that's it. Grandfather's store. He just opened it in Tron in 1912. 1912. Yeah. yeah. Marshall Blue. Yeah. Marshall Blue. My uncle was T.W., but Marshall did something. My mother's brother was Marshall. Oh, my gosh. I used to walk home from school when we lived up on Melrose Circle. And I'd walk home from school, and that's where you stop with your 10 cents or 5 cents to buy a candy. you step right in that front door. See if I can help it. Swing a screen door or something like that. You step in, there's a candy candy thing in counter right there, and they always get a bite of candy before you went home. That's why my dad had to put these fillings in. <laughs> you know, my kids don't have any fillings. <laughs> Mark and I do. <laughs> yeah, the drink machine was right inside the door. The drink door machine there. was right there, and the candy. I, think I remember when the soft drinks went from a nickel to six cents, people said, I'll never drink oh, another one. <laughs> that lasts about two days. <laughs> God got over that, I sure did. Now, Arlen's printer, you, your place, where was your, your place at that time? No, we, 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 were, we were in, but my dad started working for Seth Finding Senior at the Tron yeah. Davis Bulletin in 1930. That's right, you started right. there. And he worked there, on, well, the whole, whole time. In 1940, uh, he bought the print shop of the Bulletin Shared Equipment. Matter of fact, I gave the first press that was ever in Tron. It's in the Polk County Museum, an old Charlie and Price open press. But and I have every uh, Tron Daily Bulletin anniversary issue over here. Mr. Vining was a wonderful one. He, he's Mr. Tron. In my opinion, he did more for Tron to put Tron than any man uh, I've ever known that lived here. He, my, he was a mentor to my dad and also to me. Uh, didn't want any recognition. Just a hard working man. Work. They printed the Bulletin on six days a week back then. My grandfather died in 1934 on a Saturday. And they printed the bulletin. I've got I've got that bulletin here uh, that day on a Saturday for his little bit. Matter of fact, yeah. yeah. Garland, well, my dad was overseas from first two and a half years of my life, and my mother and I lived with my grandmother down in the big house. And Garland helped us provide and keep the print shop going, and also helped him with the newspaper. And and I tell you, if you want to do a something that on time, try to get a bulletin out every day on time. With, with, if you ever know how pretty presents are. Yeah. Yeah. Persnickety, yeah. yeah. Okay. Not easy. Not I easy. remember Zella would bring uh, Hub in when he was just an infant, and sit him on the desk, and I'd give him some furniture to play with. And that's not chairs and tables. Furniture is the wood blocks that we spaced out the form with. We, could, we call it furniture. But I would give him some furniture to play with. He was happy. 
<laughs> My mother works, she's a bookkeeper for the Ballinger Company, which we'll talk about with the dry goods store in town. Yeah. Well, they had everything, actually. Yeah, yeah. 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 we didn't have to go anywhere we got for that. Now, the bus station was, was right along past past the Ford place. Not the bus station, there was a bus station. Yeah, well, you had you had Pierce Wilson Ford, then Mama's house, and then Tolly's sandwich shop with another little beer yeah. joint that had the best hamburgers in the world. Yeah, yeah, and then, Ross, then uh, Howard Frankenfield uh, surveying office was in that row of buildings. And then P.L. Barnett, this is, we call this P.L.'s nightclub. <laughs> Douglas' his brother Booney, we could sit we'd sit down there from when we come in from a date about eleven o'clock, we'd sit there at one or two o'clock in the morning, about twelve, fifteen guys. And when the, the, the big truck, peach trucks and watermelon trucks would come up uh, down on where Side Street is now up that hill, uh, Booney could tell he said that's a Mac or that's a White or that's a GM, whatever. He knew about the sound of the motor and the and the gears changing. That was the interesting thing. You could go to PL's nightclub, like you say, after you dropped your date off or something. You'd go, you gotta use you'd the go hang out after you dropped your date to go to PL's nightclub. It's just in front of the service station. Back then, the cars were heavy enough, you could actually sit on the hood. It didn't damage you. Know? But you'd go by there and be guys sitting up on the fenders and on the hoods, just hanging out for a while until you finally had to go home. But it was great. It was our nightclub. Well, and then past, past uh, PL had his office across the street from the service station. Yeah. And then the bus station was beside there, and the Trailways bus came through here twice a day. Uh, one step, this was the main highway from Charleston to Asheville yeah. before I-26. There was no other road, and and it was a, that's one reason we were such a busy little town. But uh, the bus stopped there at the bus station, and then there was a road between the bus station and a Texaco service station. Mac Durham had a Texaco service station right on the corner there, and the little road went around behind these buildings. And the McGuinn brothers had a sheet metal shop back there. That's where they were. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. I was going to say, talking about the bus station, the first time my wife here, Becky, came to try and to meet my folks, she came in from Asheville on the bus. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting across PL's where the nightclub was in my car waiting for her to get off the bus. And the bus finally came down the mountain and pulled in. It was 176, you know, all the way down. Mm -hmm. Came down and pulled out, and I'm sitting there watching and watching. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon, Coming around the side of the bus, here she is in a little suit she made herself. You know? <laughs> and she's looking, looking good, looking good. Oh my God. Yeah, oh, she's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and so I took her up to the house and to meet my folks. So I'll never forget that's, that's How'd that. How'd work out for you? <laughs> <laughs> not too bad, not too bad. But that's my memory of the bus station. Yeah, gosh. Okay. We went brother Rock. Oh, okay. Moving up the street a little bit on the right, there's a place called the Rock Grill. Yeah. Not far from uh, where Bob Morgan's place is. Well, no, it's right where the, where the stairs are. Right here. It's right where these stairs are. Right, 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 a little further right where the stairs are. Yeah, it's really yeah. further up. Yeah. yeah. There's a Rock Grill. A.J. Cowan, who was yeah. a brother of John Cowan, and we're talking about John Cowan. Yeah. And he ran this, this, this uh, uh, eating place. Yeah, the Rock Grill. Meat and three in a beer joint. That's right. Something like that. Yeah, you can get beer there too. My yeah. dad used to have to replace plate glass windows every two or three months. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, yeah, I could just sell beer there, yeah. That was one of the places that Garland's mother would not let him go. I can't understand why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's beer in there. Yeah. Okay. Well, tell me this. We're trying to figure this out. There's the Rock Grill, and there was another place called the Trine Cafe. Or oh, is that the same thing? You talk about Bill Lennon? No, no Trine Cafe is a long time ago. I, I've got the menu for it too. It was way back. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, that was Mr. Cahoulis' first venture in Trine. Might have been. Well, this is 1940 because yeah. over here, I found this in my dad's drawer here. Uh, a, little, a little card. It's a punch card. A little punch card says Trine Cafe. It's 1940. It's dated with his name in 1940, and it's uh, like $5 if you get all that many meals. All that many meals, you know. But this is his punch card. He, I used to think he told me he used to go to the, do this at the Rye Grill, but then this, this is the one I found, so maybe they both had it. It was, you remember where Lion Burgers? Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. next door to Lion Burgers, if I'm not mistaken. It was, uh, Whitey Martin had a beer joint there at the time. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, well, this is Paul. Yeah. 
my dad came to try in 40, and he, married, he got married in 41, and I came in 42, so what you think? Yeah, so that's why this is He was hungry and on his own. Yeah. All right. Uh, you said the county was dry, but the town was not? Well, okay, let me tell you that story. Yeah. <laughs> The town of Tron voted in ABC store in 1952. Uh, matter of fact, my dad was on, put on the board and he stayed on the board until he died in 84. And Henderson County, Rutherford County, nobody around had, had liquor. And so, talk about Harmon Field, all the money from the ABC store, I mean, it, they made a lot of money. And it, it highly regulated, it's state regulated, it still is, of course, very highly regulated, but they made a pile of money. Uh, there's a little town over near Greensboro called Jamestown, North Carolina, in Guilford County, where Greensboro is dry and all that area. And everybody used to say, Trine and Jamestown, the streets were paved with gold. Because, <laughs> because the, the, the money from the store is allocated by state uh, assembly. They have to vote on it. And so much went to Harvard Field, so much went to Polk County uh, Communication, so much went to the police department, so much went to the sheriff's department, and so on. It, but they made a lot of money, and that's and that's how that's how uh, that came about. Uh, uh, I grew up in Edmond, yeah. and my uncles had to come to Tryon to get a drink. It was a busy store. The first store is right down here. Uh, well, in this row of big buildings on this side of the street, yeah. past the rock, across from. Yeah, where Lily Flower Shop was down yeah, there. Yeah. Tom Costa. Well, that, that, that was it. Yep. All right. Crop. Yeah. Beer joint. 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 Do its thing. When I was a kid, I remember used to go into the the farm supply place to the right there, and you'd go back in the back room and had, they sold feed and, and sacks of feed, just big piles. They were piled up all over the place. From a market, I would go back in there. My brother and I go back there and play on them. We'd climb on them. It's like mountains, you know. They let us play on the feed sacks. And you used to go in. Also, you walk in when we were a kid. There was a big, big thing where they had baby chicks, and it was just a big stack. Of but baby chicks, there'd be hundreds of them in a thing standing right in the middle of the floor or something. These are things you remember, you know. Uh, and Rock Grill, Karen, to Lineburger's Power Stone store. Well, yeah, before Lineburger, it was Santa's. Santa's day. Is Santa still here? She gone? Okay. Anyway, uh, Sam Summy and his brother ran, it was uh, Western Auto. And then Jim Lineburger took over from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And then there was a barbershop right there where we all got our hair cut. Yeah. Uh, Carl Fortner, Bob Lowe, Bob Lowe, and there's, I can try to remember there's a well, Mr. Bell was in there too later Mr. on. Mr. Bell was in there. Yeah. 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 And, and there was a shoe shop in the back. You go in the barbershop, and here's the chairs, and then all the way in the back there was a big counter, and there was a, you got your shoes fixed back there. Well, we missed Hunt Tucker's shoe shop, though. Yeah, yeah. On the other side of Cowan's was a shoe shop. Yeah, there was uh, shop. Ms. Tucker ran it, and she called anybody Hunt. I mean, hey, Hunt, come in, Hunt. We're going to fix your shoes, Hunt, you know? So everybody called her Hunt Tucker. That was her name. So I really don't know more name other than Hunt Tucker. Yeah, yeah, and the shoe shine guy, had a, he would, he'd be in there part of the time, and then other times he'd be, he'd be out on the street. He had a shoe shine thing. And Jew Baby. Yeah, you know, this is, this guy had a nickname. He was a black guy who wore a hat with no crown on it, just a cap on the back of his head. <laughs> and so they gave him, somebody gave him the nickname of Jubin. His name was, was John Irving. Irving. Not in the best of taste, but in the 50s, I didn't even know what it meant. <laughs> I did I, not know what it meant. The story I heard, he would take a head doctor up watches. Oh, yeah. Sell something for a bull of a watch when you would get the time back. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> on Sunday mornings, he, he would have a, a shoe shot stand. Missile, we'll take you where Missile by as far as he was, under the steel ladder that went up Stairs, he would set up his shoe shine stand on Sunday morning for people to get yeah. their shoe shine before church. Before church, yeah. So that's how that worked. And Mr. Lender ran the shoe part of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he took over for Yeah, he took over for He sure did. He, Mr. Tucker, he, yeah. he lived forever, man. He was a great shoe man. Rock grill, do, 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 do. Okay, we got Lindbergh's barbershop. Shoe shine. Andrew's furniture and appliance. 
Was that, was that, 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 was that down the street? That was, that was down across from the Lily Flower Shop. Yeah, it was. And, it was. And try and fuel supply. Yard stick over there. I found with Andrews on, on there. And good, Goodyear's florist was. was it well, Goodyear's florist is up on the end of the street where Bill's jewelry was. I don't know yeah, so. what's in there now. Yeah. Okay, we got North Trade, uh, Lily's Flower Shop, and Try and Fuel Supply, and Andrews Furniture. All this was right in there. And we're getting to the area where there was a five and ten cent store. And it was called Buchanan's, Buchanan's, and Castles, two different times. Castles was down. There was a different, a different one. To, uh, where was Castles? It was down next to Limeburgers. Okay. And you go up past uh, what was A and B then. Yeah. Your cameras yeah. was about halfway in the That's right. Next to that street. Yeah, the A and B was on the corner there. Yeah, and they did all that yeah. together. Yeah. That makes more sense. Yeah. I'd like to say that my grandfather built a center service station where Papa Mary's is. Yeah, we are getting to that too. Yeah. Bus station for a long time. Yeah, the bus was stopped there too. Yeah. 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 But yeah, where, where, where Uncle Mary's is was a Sinclair. And then later, Red Davis had Amico Tower and Recapping, yeah. had Recapping yeah. downstairs under the yeah. Under the shop. Yeah, so all that was there. Okay, and um, okay. and we had a, when we get into that block, we had a jeweler in there called Charles Southern. Yeah. Little tiny jewelry shop. Yeah. Was it between the bulletin office and, and the drugstore? Orange Pharmacy was right there. No, Orange is on the corner. What is on the other side of the drugstore? Charlie, yeah. Charlie Mammoth Southern, you know, a little, about this wide. About this wide, like I said, step up two little steps to get into it. And the alley next to it is, you go downstairs to the pool room. Pool room, we're getting, we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We heard the place when my mother and my mother got to go. Dr. Henson took me to two places the pool hall and the rock hill. All right. Well, we got the, we got the pool hall, Duke Power, Brady Insurance is in there. Brady Insurance at that time was down uh, past where Huckleberry went down toward Cowens. It, it was out on the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. 